Hi everyone, this is Kiana. And this is Andrew. And welcome to, to the, the Soul Journey, Journey Project. Project. So we're excited for another interview that we're going to be doing. As you know, we are featuring people that are sharing their stories, who are achieving their dreams, the mindset they've had to have to do that, and insights that you can gain from them to achieve your own dreams. Yes, and we are excited today to be talking with LeBrant and Cassandra Speed with Engage Event Centers. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, full disclosure, Cassandra and I are co-workers, similar to Hong and I. Uh, we work for the same company. But in conversations with Cassandra, she told me about this venture her and her husband were doing, and I thought it was really cool and really unique, and we thought it would be awesome to feature them for the Soul Journey Project. So we are very excited to bring this conversation to you today. Uh, LeBrant is an entrepreneur, coach, uh, he is an executive director uh, with BNI, or excuse me, a regional director of BNI, which is uh, the largest networking organization in the country. Uh, so he's the for the uh, Upper Midwest region. He is their regional director, as well as being a business owner and an entrepreneur and a coach. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Cassandra, as I said, she works for the company that I work for, which we won't say what company that is, you know what I'm saying? You know how that is, but yeah, <laughs> she is very successful in her own right. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy our conversation today with Engage Event Centers. All right, well, we have a treat for everyone today. We are talking with Cassandra and LeBrant from Engage Event Center. Uh, we've been really looking forward to hosting this conversation for a while, so we're so happy that we can have them here on the channel. Uh, welcome to the both of you. How are you doing today? We're good. Thank you. Thank you for having us on Soul Journey Project. I'm so excited to have a conversation with you all and share. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, after meeting you guys in person and my wife telling me and then watching some of the stuff, uh, uh, you know, when she said that you guys wanted to interview us, I was like, wow, really? Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to I'm forward to talking to you guys, and you guys are super impressive people. I was impressed when I first met you, and you guys are very humble, with the, like, which guys are like super smart and all that. So I, I that's I was like, yeah, I want to be on there. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> well, um, thank, thank you. you. No, we're, we're humbled by that. Yeah. <laughs> we're like they're cool. Let's you know, let's get them on. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when when Cassandra and I are also coworkers. Similar to Hong and myself, of those of you who have watched that interview with uh, Hong and D'Artagnan from Sailing Lutris, uh, Cassandra and I also work together at the same company and uh, has kind of formed a relationship a little bit over the last you know, few months, a year. And uh, she told me what her and her husband were doing, the venture that they were engaging in. And I thought that was amazing because um, even the way that they are doing it is a little unique in the market, I, at least in my opinion. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. So so yeah, we thought, I mean, you guys are doing it big. You guys got a business and everything, you know, we just got a channel, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but no. Um, so why don't we jump into it? Why don't you all share a little bit about um, your business, uh, the background, how you kind of came up with the idea, just kind of share a little bit about uh, uh, what you all do. I probably should start because it, it kind of it was kind of my idea. So uh I'm actually, I don't know if you're familiar with BNI. So I work, my full time job is I work, I'm the managing director for BNI Minnesota, which BNI is the largest networking organization in the world. And Minnesota is a large region. So I'm always working as an entrepreneur. I've started as an entrepreneur as a young age, and uh, I've always been in the entre entrepreneur space. And so I coach entrepreneurs. So as the pandemic uh, waned on, I was like, you know, we should have, there should be more spaces for networking, more spaces for events. And I, and I actually saw some things off of the Breakfast Club and there's some guys, some black guys that's on there, um, Earn Your Leisure, they have a podcast and they have some guys on there talking about event spaces. And I was like, man, that really kind of resonated with me because I'm like, I'm always in this circle. I'm always doing networking events. And I mean, why, why can we do it? So some months ago, um, probably six, seven months ago, I started looking into the whole idea, got some education on it. Uh, bought a course and then started to really plug it into more. And uh, obviously, we definitely have some setbacks and some challenges along the way. But I'm really pleased with my wife, them partner. When I first mentioned it, she thought I might be a little crazy. Uh, but I am a, I am an entrepreneur. It's in my it's in my genes, and I I love business and I love I, I love working with small business owners. Um, ever since I had my first briefcase at 10 years old, so um, I just I just I just jumped into it and. 
Um, you know, as with any business, you have those those learning curves. We brought some people on to help us, and uh, but I'm really excited uh, how it turned out. And we had our grand opening about a month ago, and uh, really we've gotten some good support, and um, just looking forward to what we'll be doing in the future. That's awesome. So just so everyone is clear, when LeBrant was a young guy for Halloween, he was always a, a businessman. Business <laughs> Well, I didn't dress in my mind to let me dress up very often. So, so I'm a businessman this year, mama. Yeah, <laughs> got a briefcase. Uh, I, I was I was hooked. I was like, I want to walk around with a briefcase. So uh, I got that's how it got me. Nice, <laughs> nice. And Cassandra, tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how you have approached this, you know, entrepreneurial business ownership uh, venture. Well, it's interesting because for me, I was always focused on the nine to five, you know, I came up under that, that mantra of, you know, get a good job when a solid company, um, work hard. And over time, you know, you'll, you'll, your earnings will increase and you'll be able to retire at some point. So that's kind of what I was sold on. And so when LeBrent and I got together, um, we, we talked about having uh, multiple streams of income and he's, like he said, he's always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And so he always knew, like, I know I need to work for myself. I know that in order for this to happen, I need to do this. And so, um, when he started talking about things, I was like, I'm here to support you however I can. And when he talked about the event center and my role in this and me coming on board with him, I was like, what, wait a minute, this is kind of different. But one of the things, one of his gifts is he has a gift of vision. And so he he saw the vision. He could see what it could become, what in this event center would be, how it would help. And he knew how to onboard me. He spoke lang uh, in a language that made sense to me. Um, one of the things, one of our uh, the slogan for us is, um, or our motto is connect and grow. And so that spoke to me because I like to help. I like to help take care of people. I like to be solution-based. And so this was an opportunity to provide a solution for individuals that are looking for a space to get together. And so for me, I had to lean into that. It was uncomfortable. It, it was new for me. Um, but because he did a great job of painting the vision for me and kind of even laying out like where my strengths could play, play into all of this, I began to become excited. And so now I'm, now I'm learning to balance. I'm like, okay, I'm, like you said, I work um, with you in a full-time role, but I also have the booth event center. I also have my role as, as a mother and things like that. So I'm, I'm excited now. And I, I'm, it's about, it's about the passion. Passion is what helps me move past things or into things that I need to do when I don't feel like it. But because I believe in what the end result, I believe in what we're doing and what we what we have here. I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to have sleepless nights. I'm willing to give up some of my leisure and freedom time to do this. That's nice. awesome. And so what have you two learned about yourselves or each other going into business together? Right. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, um, one of the things that I've learned is that um, because he's a visionary and I'm in the details, he soars high and I'm kind of low to the ground. And so one of the things that we've had to be very intentional about is communication and planning our communication and being sure that we understand, like I, I had to jokingly remind him, I'm like, I need you to let me know when you're talking to me as LeBrant, my husband, or LeBrent, the business owner, because if you say something to me as LeBrent, the business owner, and I'm thinking you're talking to me as your husband, my feelings get hurt because he can be very succinct and, hey, this is what we need to do. Um, and so we had to learn how to communicate and how to be strategic and plan our time and say, listen, we need to sit down and take an hour and talk about the business. We need to sit down and talk about the finances. Um, so I began to learn that because he flies high in the vision, I need to be listening for the details that he's not going to pick up on. Mm. So I, I learned, I, and he would talk, oftentimes he talks and he pours into me. And it's often at times when I, I like to write, so I don't have my notebook and my pad or whatever. So he's pouring into me and I'm like, okay, I need to remember all of this. So I just began to realize, okay, just take the, the details that I need to take and then process them. So I began to learn that, um, and he repeats things. So that helps me as well. So he'll, he'll repeat the vision again. And I'm like, okay, there's more details that I need to get to. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I think one of the things is, you know, we, we got married last May, so we haven't even been married for a whole year yet. So, so you know, we got married, we had all the planning, the wedding. So, you know, that's all an ordeal in itself, especially if you have adult children and children who think they're adults. And then we're <laughs> planning that. And then you add to that, like right after we, we got married, I'm like, yeah, it's time for another business. And so it was like, it was an immersion right away. And so, because, you know, I feel like for me, you know, we're at that time where my our wisdom is catching up to everything else we've done. And it's time for us to give that and share that. And my heart really is to help people. My heart is to give people, put them in a situation that I feel like I'd never had, especially being black growing up, never having a dad in the home. Um, I got married when I was 15, but we weren't very close. And so I, I, I always, that that's really part of even any, all of the businesses I have. I have a nonprofit. I'm the president and founder of a nonprofit. I have several other businesses as well. So, you know, I'm constantly juggling things. And so for me, I was like this, it, it's about maximizing our time. And so, yes, it, you know, one of the things as we're maximizing our time, I'm not going to mess up my marriage. And so, you know, sometimes I have to like, okay, this is your wife. So if, if it was like somebody else, I'm like, you know, it might be, and, what, and again, I'm not going to be over the top, even with my, you know, I have people at work for me and my job. Not they would never say uh, that I'm rude or mean. Maybe they would, but I hope to think that. They <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm, I'm but I'm very synced on integrity. Like if you say you're going to do something, and we say we're going to do something, keeping your word. And I, I think some people have become so flexible with their word. Like, well, if I feel like it, no, like because it's a reflection of you. And I believe that's something I strongly believe in doing what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. And holding other people accountable to that too. So it's it, it is I, you know, Jim Quick in his book um, uh, Limitless talks about the different types of geniuses. And one genius is a steel genius. They're detailed people. My wife is a steel genius. I'm a I'm a blaze genius. I can paint a picture. That's my gift to paint pictures and to grow things. So you know, we just gotta learn how to because sometimes they clash. Like even doing this interview is like, what are you wearing? I'm like, what am I wearing? I don't know clothes. Uh, so, you know, but you trust the, <laughs> yep. are we the coordinate, are we going to like, so that stuff is like, and sometimes I got to be like, I'm doing like 19 things. I don't want to think about that. So it's like, sometimes I just have to take a breath and it's like, but then she'll know how to regulate. Cause just like yesterday, she's like, she's talking about this. I'm like, I'm not into this. She said, do you not want to talk about this? And I'm like, nope. And then, so we are able to, we pivot. So giving each other time out has been really helpful during this process. So. Nice. I love it. I'm sure Kiana can relate to the communication things and the, uh, yeah, a lot of it. Uh, and we've been there for almost nine years. So, <laughs> but it is a constant, it's a constant thing to grow and develop in uh, yes. the communication. Yeah. But knowing, knowing yourselves and knowing your partner, that that's a huge piece just from what you all said, because in similar ways, he's a visionary. And then I'm like, wait, I got to write, you know, like, <laughs> So I, I definitely understand that perspective. And, you know, are you talking to me as the business person or as your spouse? I think that that's a huge point. There's a lot of wisdom in that because we can receive it differently mm. depending on the context. But based on some recent conversations, <laughs> as you can see by well, his more face. More than recent. I mean, years, <laughs> of, years of conversations. I mean, you know, uh, I work with, I, in the department that I work in at the company that Cassandra and I work at, I'm in a department of all women. Like, so it's me and like 20 other ladies. Mm -hmm. And I've learned, I've had to learn, and I keep being put in environments to learn this lesson on how to communicate across gender lines, you know, and because men and women do process information differently in general. Um, and they, we lead from different places, you know what I'm saying? And so... I could be saying something, being a little bit more direct and curt with it, um, and she will take it and, and it'll hurt her feelings, like you said, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm like, well, I didn't mean it like that. It wasn't that wasn't the intent. I'm just saying we need to, you know, get it going or whatever, and not realizing that I need to soften the language or or soften the tone or remember that she's my wife and. You know, I want to sleep peacefully. Yeah. You know, tonight. I want to sleep peacefully. Right. In, in, in the bed. Right. The center is nice, but I want to sleep here. So. Listen, look, I don't have no problem falling asleep. We had nights, you know, it's, it's cold, but listen, I'm sleeping. <laughs> Might be a little chilly on the other side, yeah. but 
Right. And because of that, I begin to learn more about myself as yeah. well, right? Because there are some things um, I, I realize that I'm sensitive, right? Yeah. And when we, I mean, we've known each other since we were eight, nine years old. And there was even a moment in our, our middle school years where we, I, I had a reaction because I was oversensitive. Yeah, and, so, and so because of me being <laughs> oversensitive, um, he ended up getting suspended from school. But because I, I've, I'm learning that I have to regulate that as well. So even as I tell him, like, you need to tell me if you're talking to me as my husband or, you know, as a co-business owner, I also have to learn that I have to control me. I, I can only control my responses to him. So I, I have to trust and believe that what he's bringing to me is with good intention. And I also have to seek clarity. So if he's giving me, if he's painting this vision and he's got expectations and it's not clear for me, I have a responsibility to get clarity on that and not just think, well, you gave me the vision. So I just ran with what you told me. It's your fault. I have to take some responsibility too. So it's it's a humbling place to be too. Again, I went from thinking, I'm gonna just be nine to five. I'm never gonna be a business owner. I'm That's just not me. I wanna go home at the end of my day and veg out. But now when I close my computer and switch into Engage Event Center, I've got more work to do. Um, but knowing the purpose behind it fuels me. So it re-energizes me as, I, as I'm like, I'm tired. I don't wanna think about my day job. I wanna go into Engage Event Center I get re-energized. So it's, there's plenty of room for growth. That's the other thing I've learned about myself, about both of us, that we're growing, that we, as we, we're growing as individuals, we're growing as a unit as well. Um, and even at the beginning of our relationship, you know, I made it very clear. I was like, listen, we're going to have fights. We're going to have, as my parents used to call them, discussions, a cross between a discussion and an argument. We're going to have discussions, but I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. We're going to get through this. So those are the things that um, help us grow more as individuals and as a, as a couple. Nice. Yeah, I think you bring up the whole suspension thing on that. But that wasn't, <laughs> I was I was in the seventh grade, so I mean, like, of course, it's been a while. It's been a while, right? <laughs> it's like gotta let that go. It's time to let that go. <laughs> I'm, work, I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> everyone knows. But I think you bring up some great points, some extra things to think about if you go into business with a spouse or a mm -hmm. partner, um, a romantic partner, uh, it's it's different than when you go into business with just a straight up business partner or a friend or you know something like that, where you just have investors investing in your project uh, who you never meet. Um, those You have to do different things to manage those relationships, right? There's different expectations placed upon you. Uh, when you go into business with your spouse, you have to remember, I go home at night with that person. You know what I mean? And um, it, 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 the relationship goes on beyond what happens with this business, uh, whether it's successful or not. The two of us are still, you know, ideally still going to yes. be together and still moving forward and still have a relationship to build and a household to, to manage and build together. So I think you bring up excellent points on how you have to be more mindful uh, when you go into business with your spouse or, or, or you know, romantic partner versus someone else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned kind of there were some obstacles and challenges that came up as you were starting this venture. Can you share a little more about that? And what did you all have to overcome to get this going? Well, yeah, there, there were several. I mean, ultimately, I had to spearhead it. And then I wanted to make sure that it was like in a position to give it to her. So mostly I spearheaded the startup um, financing and all that stuff. And then I just I didn't want to put too much on her plate. So I one I think I think is important when you're dealing with your spouse is knowing what's too much. Now they have to regulate that and say no or whatever, but I think it's important for me to kind of know her well enough to say, okay, I don't want to put too much. So I had to spearhead the whole process where I had to learn all the legalities and all the things. So I, I tried in another city, uh, and that was a god. That was a, a blessing actually because I went to the even taking it to the city council and got denied. And so uh, it was just a whole learning of the space, what I was really looking for in terms of the spacing, then was able to find uh, this space in a diner, which I was really appreciative. The, the, the owner of the building really worked with me. We were able to build out together, really get the space to where I wanted it to be and, and be able to create the environment that I wanted. And so working with the city was super easy. Working with them was easier. Um, but then, you know, it's all the logistics as you do a build out and you're dealing with contracting, and you're dealing with furniture and all that other stuff, you know, uh, color designs and, you know, so obviously signage and logos and 
you know, there's all those details, but I think it's important to understand I'm pretty regimented in terms of my time. And so how I spend my time, how I spend, um, I, I always tell, you know, I tell people all the time, people don't have a time management problem. They have a mind management problem. So the issue really is not your time, it's your mind. It's where you focus, uh, where focus uh, goes, uh, energy flows. And so I'm really big on focusing on the right thing. So I was one of the, I wanted to make sure by the time I handed it to her, it was more manageable. And then she kind of helped me with some of the, you know, buying the furniture or, or getting some or helping me through the logo. I kind of had the general theme and the the, the logo, the all that stuff. I just wanted to onboard her so she, so she, we were a part of it together. So it wasn't like, hey, here's all everything. Uh, I wanted to make sure that she was a part of it. And uh, once we got past those initial things, it, it started to flow a little smoother. So, uh, yeah, there was with any business, you got to understand that with anything you do, there's going to be challenges. You got to understand that you have to make the determination that with any challenge, I'm going to just press through it. Yep, mm -hmm. challenges are just just like a marriage or relationship challenges. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna work we're gonna work through that. So I think that's the same thing that came with this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. Um, I think one of the biggest obstacles for me was, um, I, I, he called it mind management, right? Setting my mind to embracing this. I think initially I kind of thought it was this very simple thing like, oh yeah, I can help people book, you know, days and times to use the center. But it was so much more than that. Um, and it, it was coming alongside him as he was doing the learning as well. Um, that's that, that's one thing I do wish I had done. I think I wish I had when he was participating in um, he was doing some studies and, and going through some podcasts and different things to learn the nuts and bolts of this. Right. I wish I would have done that simultaneously so that I could kind of glean those details that I needed, because as he was onboarding me, I had all these questions which he had had access to. But now he because his mind doesn't work that way. He's like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, I know it somewhere. Well, it was in what he was doing. Um, so that was the, one of the bigger challenges for me. And I think really um, setting real expectations, realistic expectations of what this really entails, that it wasn't just like you flip on a switch and open the door and people start coming in and you're booking. Um, there's a whole lot of groundwork that has to happen as well. So um, taking his word at what he was saying, like, yeah, we've got, we've got to do this, that and the other. And I'm like, OK. And he's like, no, we need to do this, that, and the other. And so I'm like, okay, I, I have to do, I have to do my part. So those are some of the challenges that I experienced. And as you see, we I I, I calculate, but I didn't calculate perfectly. So I should <laughs> onboard. So in my process, you know, that's what you're learning, right? I learned in later, it's like, okay, I should have onboard her earlier. Um, because, you know, but that's the mistakes, you know, and she had grace. And I had, I think that's a big thing too, having grace for one another. I think if you, if people don't have grace for each other, you can really mess up your life and deal with that anxiety and bitterness. So I think you, as we're learning together, having grace for one another and saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, you know, I messed up. She, me you know, she messed up." I'm like, "It's all good. We, we'll re we'll recover. No, you know, we're not we're not here. We're not we're not heart surgeons here, right? <laughs> this business, uh, no one's life is being lost here. So I think that's you always have to take those things in consideration." Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I want to pivot just slightly or maybe go a little bit broader. Ella Brent, you talked a lot about being an entrepreneur. And in our culture uh, here in the United States, entrepreneurship is like a big deal, right? Like I remember when I was in the fourth grade, um, sometimes our teacher would invite in different guest speakers. At one time, she invited in an entrepreneur. And uh, you know, he was kind of talking about the business that he was starting and this, this product that he wanted to bring to the marketplace. And he, he, he was like, you know, it's a skateboard. You're going to be able to do 360s. And at the time, we didn't know what he was talking about. Really, he didn't have a picture, but we have them today. They're called hoverboards. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if he's the guy who actually brought that to market or if he just had a similar idea. But either way it goes, that product is a real thing now right? Like it's out there. Right. So as an entrepreneur in, in this culture, talk a little bit about the pros and cons of entrepreneurship. Like, is it something that everybody really should aspire to like it's sold? Or do you think you have to have a special personality or a special skill set? Just talk from your, from your experience, talk a little bit about that. 
Well, you know, uh, one of my businesses, I actually do coaching. I'm doing a uh, seminar here at the center on in May 14th. And I'm actually talking about the essentials of understanding how to be in a business. And the reason why I believe I'm uniquely qualified to do this, because I failed a lot. When I say a lot, a whole lot, I've failed, failed. I had failed marriages. And, and listen, my failed businesses actually had a direct correlation to failed marriages. Because when you financially messed up, it can mess up your whole relationship. 50% of all divorces are due to money. And so if you don't know what you're doing in business, it can be catastrophic, right? And so I've had, you know, I've always loved business, always loved being an entrepreneur since I was like 16, 17. Yeah, I failed a whole lot. And I learned through um, just, you know, getting good mentors, getting coaching, paying for coaching and reading. I read now over a hundred books a year. And so one of the things is filling in the gaps of what you don't know. And I will say, I believe there's different schools of thought. There are some people that believe there's an entrepreneurial gene. And, and, and so I do, I've read some people that do believe that. I just think there's enough research to know about life that people can learn what they need to learn. Now, you know, it's not like basketball that I have to be 6'6 six, six or 6'1. Six, I have to jump a certain amount of height. This, it takes a, a, a certain type of mindset and a heart set in order to do business. So I do believe everyone can learn it. But one of the things that people are not willing to do is they don't, they're not willing to do the research that, that, that goes along with it. So it's not just about no matter if you're good at cooking chicken. So just because you're good at frying chicken doesn't mean you can have a restaurant. So there's so much back in, and you need to, if you don't know it, you need to ask someone that does know or do a lot of research. And I think a lot of times I was just doing business based on skill, and I was selling because I thought, man, I'm a good speaker. I can sell. Spe you know, selling is not about speaking. It's about listening. <laughs> it's about finding the need in the marketplace and filling a gap. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, those are the things I would often say is people need to do their research. They need to go give mentorship and put themselves in good environments. One of the most invaluable things I've learned to do was put myself in the environment with people who are, in, who are entrepreneurs who are thinking a certain way, because a lot of people's thinking is so corrosive, you just don't know it. You're around certain family members and they're talking, why are you doing that? And, and that stuff gets inside you, whether you acknowledge it or not, it gets inside of you. So when you go to do it, you end up failing. So I believe you have to start, you have to take steps, you know, to start cleansing your environment, put yourselves in the right environment and then doing the right research in order to really be an entrepreneur, because it's, it's hard. Listen, let's be clear. Starting businesses, owning businesses is not easy and it's not for the faint of heart. So you shouldn't bite it just because you see somebody on Instagram taking trips and posting cars and all these clothes. Don't believe the hype. Like that's one part that some people get into. But don't believe all that Instagram, Facebook success stuff. Like a lot of them, it's just that they rent and all that stuff to prove it to you. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of work that goes behind that. So be willing to put in the work. Uh, if you if you want to really grow a business. Excellent. And Cassandra, I want your perspective as kind of a new up and coming entrepreneur, right? You're kind of like new to the business owning space. What has been your experience as you've kind of acclimated and onboarded to use you all's term to being a business owner? What's the key differences you're noticing between like that employee mindset, the nine to five to being business owner and, you know, being accountable for that? I, I actually found there's a lot more similarities than differences. Um, I think intentionality is the biggest piece of it, right? So no matter, no matter what I'm doing, um, you know, it's being integrous and operating at a level of excellence wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. And um, knowing that it's okay if I don't know. Uh, you know, I always, I think I always equated being an, a business owner means that you know a lot more that, you, you know, you, because you're able to do this independently, that um, you're smarter, you're smarter than the rest. And so I think that was one of the things that held me back was because I didn't feel like I was smart enough. I was like, I don't necessarily have a, I don't have a degree. I've gone to college, but, you know, my skill sets are only so much. I don't know how to do bookkeeping and HR and all the components of running a business. But when I really started to look at it, I was like, a lot of those skill sets I have, or I have access to. And I also realized that uh, it's about the relationships. It's the relationships that I, that I build. One of the things I, I like to tell myself all the time is that I don't have to know everything. It's about the people that I know. All the people in my room is what makes me the stronger person. So um, 
But it does definitely take you being honest with yourself about what is it that you want to do? And are you really all in? Again, sometimes a lot of people will think about the benefits that come from owning my own business. I get to have my own schedule and I get to travel when I want to. And you think about all the benefits, but they don't really stop and, and weigh the cost of, am I really willing to invest my time, my energy, my mindset, my heart set in order to make this happen? Mm. You know, I want to piggyback on something my wife just said. I think it's so key. Uh, you hear a lot of people will say stuff like, um, this ain't my you know, this ain't my long-term job. I'm just here. I'm just kind of working my way through. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that's destroying your future. Like mm -hmm. everybody that's successful has an integrity says, like, I, I still have a job. I, I run a region, so I, my bosses don't work here. And no one that, that, that's over me works here. But I work it like it's my business. And what I learned was, is when you're in a position of employment, you should treat it like you own the company. Would an owner do that? Because if you start thinking that, if you start thinking differently, when you own a place, that's how people are going to treat your business. If you work for a place and you're giving them halfway service and you're like, oh, well, it's not my company. If you have any of that mindset, you're not fit for entrepreneurship because when someone does it to you, you want to cry bloody murder. But that's what you sow. I believe in reaping and sowing. You can't sow that to someone else's company and think you're going to get something, never so, something different. So I believe her quality of work that she does, my quality of work, I'm very intentional with my work. I'm very, I, that represents me, you know, and, and I don't care what you're doing. I think people, one of the most important traits for people is a sense of urgency. Everyone, if you want to be successful in anything, you have to have a sense of urgency. That's what distinguishes people who fail and people succeed. People who succeed have a sense of urgency. Times I've failed, I didn't have an urgency. Oh, well, then maybe tomorrow. Oh, well, no, today, tonight, let's do it. Let's get it done. That pushing through and whether it be on my job or whether it be in my businesses, I have a sense of urgency and integrity that whatever I do has my name on it. I don't care if I'm volunteering. I don't care if we're picking up church for a volunteer group. I, I mean, picking up trash on the street. You know what? I'm going to pick up that trash like I'm the best trash picker upper in the whole city. And I think that's mm -hmm. really the key. Mm -hmm. That, that's awesome. And um, we talked about that a little bit too in one of our interviews with Safisha, S Sylvia Andrews, and just the importance of how you do one thing is how you do everything yes. is really the essence of that. Because we do get in this mindset of, yeah, when I really do my passion, then I'm going to put myself into it. And it's like, no, right now you're practicing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, right now, that's what's sowing those seeds and helping you to be the person you need to be in order to achieve your dreams and the things that you want to do. So I love that. Hey, if you're picking up trash, if you're volunteering, if you're walking the dog, if you're whatever, right, everything needs to be putting that energy and your best self forward because it does matter. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's critical. And I like, I like the the law of reciprocity that you called out, right? The, the sowing and reaping or seed time and harvest. We've talked about that plenty of times as well in previous videos on our channel. Uh, what you put in is, is what you get out, right? And it starts oftentimes with being, supporting someone else's vision, supporting someone else's dream. Um, and it's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with supporting someone else's dream until you're in a position where you can pursue yours, right? With, with your full self. Um, and like you said, there's opportunities to learn when you are in a nine to five job, mm -hmm. right? In that, in that company, it's a fully baked company in most cases. So it has marketing, it has finance, it has accounting, it has HR, it has, you know what I'm saying? All these different departments that you can learn about, that you can learn from, that you can glean these, these things from, that you can then apply to your business, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get exposure to IT, you get exposure, you know what I'm saying, to shipping and receiving if, if you're in that kind of a business or whatever it is, right? You have that opportunity when you work for someone else, right? Like even McDonald's. McDonald's is vastly successful because they have a business system that they put in place that <laughs> automates their success. You only see yourself as working the fries, right? But you don't see the bigger picture, which you could, is there for you to see, you know, but where it's your focus. I love what you said about focus. What is your focus? Are you focused only on, well, this is just my part-time thing and I'm just here, just, you know, or are you looking at, well, let me learn. Let me see what I can glean from this operation. You see Absolutely. what I'm saying? How is McDonald's able to serve hundreds of millions of people daily all over the world and get a consistent product 
right? Whether you're in, in, in Tokyo or you're in New York City, McDonald's is McDonald's. Now they have different regional, you know what I'm saying, specialties, but you're going to get a very similar feel in all of that. You can learn so much mm-hmm. from, from working in that kind of environment. doesn't mean that's your, that's your forever spot, right? you know, yeah. but you still, you have to change your perspective on why you're there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I had a little Kanye reference pop in my head when he was talking about the fries. Uh, <laughs> this well, week it's mop and floors. Next week it's the fries. Wrong channel, man. <laughs> but it's the ambition. That's what yeah. it's getting. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Right. I'll, right. I'll take that. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, taking it a little bit deeper, um, and either one of you can talk about this. We, we talked about what are you learning about yourselves in terms of starting business, you know, as a couple, but what have you seen about yourself over time, right? Reflecting on who are you now that you weren't 10 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Like who, who did you have to become in order to take this step? Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. I, um, when he and I started dating, one of the things we talked about was leadership, me being in leadership. And I told him how I had once been in a leadership role in many for many years, and I had stepped out of it. I was like, I don't want to be a leader. I mean, that's not me. And he's like, what? What do you mean? He's like, you're a leader. He's like, you're bossy. I'm like, I am not bossy. I do not like that word. He's like, you don't like that word because you have negative connotations about it. Um, you have to You have to learn about who you really are not what people say you are and not the labels that other people are wearing. And you're like, I don't like that. I don't want to be that, but you have to discover your own strengths. And so um, I began to learn that I am a leader and my leadership looks and sounds different than the person to the left or the right of me. Right. I don't, I'm not the person at the front of the the room with a microphone talking, but my leadership skills come through and the things that I do on a day-to-day basis. And so just that aha moment for me, I feel like I'm, I'm a, I feel like I'm an adult now. I feel like I've actually grown <laughs> up now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but it's very powerful to realize it because coming with that, I began to unlock access to other things I had never given thought to. Like what what is really important to me? What is my purpose? Am I walking in my purpose? Are the things that are on my plate the things that should be on my plate? If I'm gonna have a full plate, then let me have a full plate of all the things that I really want to, I want to enjoy. It's kind of mm-hmm. like when you go to a family dinner or a buffet or something, you don't fill your plate up with a bunch of stuff that you don't want and you're not gonna eat and you're gonna pick at and complain about. No, you pick out all the stuff that you're like, oh, her potato salad and her that, that barbecue. You get all the things that you really want. And so I feel like now I'm in that space where I can make sure the things that are on my plate are the things that I really, really want, I wanna grow into. Mm. that's great that's deep mm-hmm. no, my, my wife is uh is dope i appreciate her I, one of the things <laughs> i do, I do really because you know four years ago my my life was quite different you know i was sitting in, on a couch in the midst of my third divorce and yes i said that correctly in the midst of my third divorce it was so bad my friends thought maybe man you should not do marriage anymore it's it's i was about 70 pounds heavier than i am right now uh and broke and and it really at a point just felt like there was nothing left for me. Like I like I I rolled the dice and my life was just a crap. Yeah, I just crapped out, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I just had to really come to myself to say I can be. I still have an opportunity. My mom used to. My mom was uh, raised me in the church. I'm also a minister. My mom raised me, and there was something she used to always say to me as a little kid. My mom died about 15 years ago, and she used to say to me, "Your gift and calling will make room for you." At one, some point, and it was something that just resonated in my heart that I, my life may look like a total and complete mess right now, but it does not have to stay this way. And so something just clicked in me at that moment. I can go deeper, but just say right that moment, I said something clicked and made me say, I don't have to live like this. I can still be married to the one of my dreams. I can still have the businesses I was supposed to do. I can still live and with the live the life that I was destined to live. And within a couple of years, I'm end up reconnecting with her. She said, we grew up together and lost connection. And, um, you know, even, even my friends pulled me aside, like, it, why did she marry you? Does she not know your past? Why would she marry you? Uh, but, <laughs> but she knew me as a boy, right? And, and I'll never forget when I told, we told her mom and she, her mom was in tears. She said, me and your mom always prayed for this. 
this is what we believe that we're meant for you. And I, and it reminded me, it reminded me of what my mom told me. She said, your gift will make room for you. Mm-hmm. What was for you is for you. So I just had to lean into that. And then I just redeveloped my whole life. Like um, where I eat, where I live, how I, how I get up in the morning. I just read, I just really said, I'm going to be, I leaned into it. And so I got a great job. I got into a position. Um, now I was seen from somewhere else and I was really go- doing something well. And someone else said, we want you to run this region. It's just opportunities came and now this business and now my coaching business and my speaking, I speak now and my, my I'm a president and founder of a nonprofit. So all these things just start opening up over these years when I just lean into the fact it's not done for me. And so I just want to encourage anyone that feels like they've just made up too many mistakes, they, things are over for them. It's mm-hmm. never over until you quit. And mm-hmm. as long as you pick yourself up little by little, you can be exactly where you were meant to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, this being right. resolute has been uh, so powerful for me. Um, I think that's what kind of helped was my turning point was him being resolute and intentional. So he had always been resolute, even when as a fourth grader, you know, as he was like, you have a boyfriend? No, well, I'm your boyfriend. He was resolute, right? I know, that's, not, that's, not, that's not appropriate nowadays. <laughs> Times have changed, as they say. That, that's it. That was the you can't do that nowadays. No. Yes. <laughs> but he, he turned that intentionality and purpose, and he began to pour into me. You know, he began to show me things that I wasn't necessarily wanting to see, but he knew I needed to see it. And he would point things out. He's like, "Yeah, this, you're you're bossy." But that's good. There's a there's the negative connotation because that's not a good thing. But you know how to be assertive. You know how to take charge. You know, you said you fill in the blanks for me. And so that intentionality is what I saw change. Because even in the you know three plus years that we've been together, um, I just saw that him being resolute. Like I I really want this, and he turned it into intentionality, which then turned into action, which then turned into more intentionality and more action. So. He just began to pave the way for me. He modeled the behavior for me. He's been my coach the whole this whole time. He's been coaching me. Um, not as much he pours into me, but more so he he models the things that we needed to do and that he needed to do. And so for me, I, I carved out from that and said, well, what does that look like for me? Like I tried to do some of the things he was doing. I'm like, that's not for me. But I found my way of doing it, getting to the same goals. Oh, phenomenal. That's yeah. phenomenal. It makes me think about too, you know, the quote, if you don't quit, you win. Yes. Right. And, and I think we can hit these low moments in our lives and you have a turn, you have a decision, big decision to make. You can decide to quit. Yeah. And for some people that that's even suicide because it looks yeah. so dark. Right. Yeah. Or I'm going to keep going because there's something in me that's telling me that, no, there's more. This is not the end. This is just a chapter in your story. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's thank you for being so transparent at, with sharing your background. Um, so I think it is important for people to know that uh, when you read a lot of biographies and autobiographies of successful people, you will actually find that's more common than not that they had a rock bottom moment, you know, at some point in their past. Mm-hmm. And that was almost like a turning point, you know, in their story you know, Bill Gates and, and, and uh, Steve Jobs and all these individuals, these names that we know were broke, busted and disgusted for a long time before they were billionaires. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we see them as billionaires now and think it's always been like that, mm-hmm. you know, and we know that's not true. And once they do hit a certain level of fame, notoriety, you see other challenges that they go through, right? You see the things with I mean, just as a more pop reference, Will Smith and Chris Rock and that whole thing. And, you know, the, the challenges in, in his marriage and, and Will Smith's marriage and just like all these different things um, still happen. Life still happens no matter how much money you have or if you have quote unquote success, um, you still have real life. And so I think that's important to show because like you were saying earlier, LeBrent, in our social media world, we we can think it's it's all the glitz and glam and mm-hmm. the trips and the money and the beaches and the, you know, um, I think that's all it is. And that's not right. true. Right. Mm-hmm. Real life is still happening outside of that three minute clip. Yep. You know. Yeah. Right. And those and those comparisons are, are, are deadly. They're not just destructive. They're deadly because yeah. those comparisons 
Um, I think comparison is, you know, some people say comparisons are the enemy of happiness is the destruction of happiness because you're comparing your marriage, your life, your situation with someone else's life situation. One, you're comparing, you're comparing your life to a snapshot of their life. Yeah. And so the reality is don't compare your life to a snapshot of someone else's life. Mm -hmm. You know, so reality is you got to go deeper and figure out what, what, what do you want to do? I think a lot of times people don't succeed because they keep trying to do things because they saw someone else do it rather than they personally own it. That's not who they really are. You know, Simon Sinek in his book says, start with why. And that really is something that drives me. I'd start with why I do what I do. But I think there's something deeper than your why. It's your who. Who you are is even greater than why you want to do something because if those two things are in conflict with one another, you will never succeed. You got to go deep into why, who you really are. And is, is the who you are conducive and, uh, uh, to the why you want to do something. And I think once you get those two things in alignment, that's when things can really take you to the next level. You're absolutely right. I have on my whiteboard in the back, um, the number one, I have like these 10 rules to live my life by. And number one is know thyself, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. know thyself. And it's age old wisdom, right? Every spiritual background, every spiritual culture in history has had a similar saying or idea is you have to know who you are in this world before you go forward to do anything. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I think people are chasing a false identity. Yeah. They're chasing someone else's identity, someone else's mm -hmm. dream, someone else's ideas, and not being true to self, not being mm -hmm. true to their own passions and gifts and talents. I, you're in, um, you know, I'm familiar with that same phrase that your mom shared with you, the scripture that your talent right? And your gift will make room for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what those gifts and talents are, right? You yep. have to do your own life review. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And understand who am I? And people are not willing to do that work first. They want the things, they want the, they want the success, they want the money, they want the house, they want those things versus the value of gaining the knowledge of who I am. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, Martin Luther King, uh, one of my favorite quotes from him, he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but rather where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Who we are is really revealed in those times of challenge and controversy. And to lean into it, to really understand it and own it. Because when, you know, you, someone gets caught doing something and that's not really who I am. Yeah, right now that is who you are. Own that. If that's what you got busted doing, if you said that, own it. Because until you own it, you can't change it. Because you can't change it. But you can't change it unless you own it. So I had to own that I hadn't been a very good husband in the past, that I had not followed through on the stuff that I had, that I didn't eat well, I wasn't living a healthy life. And once I owned it, I could change it. And so I believe you have to own your stuff first before you can change it. You can't be like, no, that's not really who I am. Yes, it is. After a while, that is, that's it. But that doesn't mean you have to stay there. So I think that's really important, too. You know, we were talking with one of our adult children about um, just navigating life. You know, they're into adulting. They're trying to find their path. And one of the things we asked was, you know, what do you really enjoy doing? What brings you joy, right? And so they started thinking about like careers and jobs. I'm like, no, what, like, what kind of things do you enjoy doing? Because when you begin to tap into like what brings me joy, you begin to find your passion, your purpose. And from there, you begin to find the, okay, what, what's my role? What role, what out there matches against what I, what brings me joy, what becomes my purpose. Mm -hmm. And it does take work. Cause I, cause like you said, you have to own some things. So there's some ugly stuff that's in the way you have to own that and be like, this is who I am right now. And I don't like this. I want to get to the real stuff. I want to get to what really the part, the way I want to be known, the way I know myself, the way I love myself. I want other people to see and know that too. And then that's when you're able to connect into the job, the career, the path, the business. Um, but you have to start with who am I? What brings me joy? Because that's when you find the vehicle to serve your purpose in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we we do focus more on the jobs. And, and try to find, link that with our passion mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than starting with your passion and then allowing the job to unfold, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff too. And I think about, you know, when you talk about versions of ourselves, we have the idea of the higher self, right? And when we say that's not who I am, it's because we're comparing it to what we know is our higher self. 
the ideal. Mm. Yep. The mm. ideal self. Mm. We're just not operating in it right now. Right. Right. Yeah, so, but, but yes, but you have to acknowledge this is the version of myself right now <laughs> in order to get to that higher version that you actually desire. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Earlier, earlier videos in our channel, we talked a lot about imagination and the importance of imagination, how imagination can literally create your reality. Mm -hmm. And LeBrant, I think your story is an example of it. You said as a child, you imagined, you saw yourself as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, even if you did not have the word for it at that time, you had this, have that word. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, your, vocab your vocabulary had to, had, to, had to level up, right? Yeah. <laughs> but in your mind's eye, you could see it, mm. you know? And to your point, Kiana, I think it's a, a phenomenal point. We're comparing our today to the what we see in our mind's eye yeah right our idealized version of ourselves our fully realized selves mm -hmm. and it's not matching up mm -hmm. you know and so that's that is the goal that's where we're headed to right in the christian in the christian world we call it the christ right it's that yeah. christ within that is that ideal that that spirit that dwells within mankind um and all different spiritual backgrounds and cultures have called it different things Right. But it's it's that that we're that we're seeing, that we're feeling, that we're sensing and we're recognizing that our today doesn't match that, you know, and that could cause us to go into depression. It can got, cause us to go in a lot of different yeah. ways. Mm -hmm. It can cause us to go down a dark path, mm -hmm. you know, because we see this idea. And we're like, there's no way I can ever hit that target. Uh, or we can get into this like almost toxic ambition yes, and try to do too much to make yeah, it happen or enforcing right mm -hmm. exactly instead of doing what you said cassandra and that's embracing my now mm -hmm. embracing where i am embracing the journey mm -hmm. and recognizing that i can all i can do is take the next right step yes. right. can't do anything else but take the next right step and what is that next right step it, absolutely and then just to piggyback off of that I, one the imagination can be trained it's not a, it's not it doesn't run amok you can train it Yep. Uh, so one, you can train the imagination. I, I spend a lot of time doing that. I train mm -hmm. my imagination and I, and, I, and I can create my own world. So right? that's a lot of things that I do. But one of the things that you talked about was like looking for your your purpose and your plan. What about people that don't know this? And what you we talked about earlier was pouring yourself where you are, what you have. One of my favorite stories in the Bible uh, is the story of Joseph that his dad instilled in him enough confidence that when he found himself in a real deplorable situation, he poured himself into it so much that it brought him promotion. What happens is when you pour yourself into whatever you're doing at the time, it will naturally bring you promotion. People will see what you're doing. It will bring you promotion. And that opportunity alone will give you out, that will give you more pathways to start finding out what do I really like? See, you have, I always tell my kids, when you're excellent at what you do, you'll get more options to do things. When you're not excellent, you won't get many options. So I don't care what you're doing, be excellent at it because being excellent always gives you options. I know when we were together, you guys kind of was like, oh yeah, we both got this one scholarship. I'm like, what? You guys just kind of threw that out there. It's like, yeah, both of us were in here. Yeah, we got both. But you know, like, yeah, we didn't have debt. And we, I was like, wow, I wish I didn't graduate like that. Why? Because you guys were excellent in high school and it gave you more options to get scholarship. It's a really simple process. I didn't know that in high school. I was like, oh, that's how I get more scholarships, being really good at stuff I don't want to do. But now it's like you got freedom because you didn't, you were excellent. I'm sure you didn't want to go to class just like everybody else wanted to go to class. I'm sure you didn't want to do all your grades like everyone else, but you did it. And that stuff gave you more options. I was like, wow, they both were like, yeah, we both got this. I'm like, wow, that, I never even got up. No one even offered me this little. <laughs> You know, so that to me is like that yeah. to me is a proof of excellence. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to teach my kids now. Like, I don't really like that class. Don't doesn't matter. Do the class hard so that you can have options to do the classes you really want to do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to me, that's why I really that's if you're looking for purpose, just be really good at what you are doing now. Where you are. That's right. That's right. Well, I'll brag on my wife a little bit because uh <laughs> so we, we were at the scholarship that what he's referencing, we were at a scholarship. Um, not reception, but a, a gala. It was a gala yeah. for our local scholarship uh, program here in the in our area. And uh, I was a recipient of the scholarship and Kiana was offered the scholarship. 
but she was so excellent that she got to turn it down for an even better scholarship <laughs> where, you know, Bill Gates put her through school. So, uh, and, and paid for her college. I had to, you know, put together quite a few different people, but that's okay. <laughs> but she was so excellent. Bill said, look, I'm just going to pay for yours all the way through. So I would yeah, say, yes, she's a great example of that. You, you both are hers, but you know what it just showed? She took it to another level. And I'm sure when you're in high school, when everybody else was going, I'm sure you wanted to go places and do stuff too. You know, I, you know, it took me till I was 50 to realize that just because people got good grades didn't make them smarter than me. They just worked mm-hmm. harder. I just always thought, oh, this, this comes natural to them. I was like, and talking to them like, no, it doesn't. I just work more. And it's like, oh, oh, that's, that's interesting. I thought it was a natural thing. And when you start to get older, you realize, oh, people that have businesses and they have this stuff, oh, it doesn't come easy to them. It's hard, you know, getting financing. Is it, was it easy for me to get financing? No. My wife knows I was working, if, 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 doing paperwork, going to banks, like going up, doing, jumping through all these hoops to get the money I need to do. But you know what? I knew it wasn't easy. And so I just knew I had to work harder. And so I think once you understand the process, you don't get, or you don't get discouraged. You're like, oh, everyone does this. When you think it's, when you think it's like, oh, this is harder for me because, you know, oftentimes when I've seen speakers speak, I was like, well, of course it happened for them. They're white. <laughs> of course it happened for them. She's a white woman or he's, or oh, they're Asian. I always make these excuses, not realizing, wait a minute. Yeah. With all that, you know, I was read a book of a Booker T. Washington up from slavery. If you guys have read that, and he talked about what he did in order to get to the uh, Hampton Institute, which was crazy. Like he was living homeless, like in the street, just because he was so determined to get to that institute. And this dude was coming literally out of slavery. Um, and so his choices were really, lo- and I'll never forget how he got in Hampton Institute. He, he did, couldn't afford to pay for it. So he had to be the janitor. And he said his, his entrance exam was cleaning a room. And he said, I wanted to clean that room so well that she would not find a, a speck of dust on that floor. That's how much I wanted to get into this. And that just brought, that just rung on my head. He had no money, but he said I had a broom. And, and so he cleaned that room. When she saw that room and she came in there and she said, oh, you're, you're in. Like he cleaned the room so well that it got him. And now we know him because he wrote books and made crazy huge speeches but it started because he cleaned a room so well the mm-hmm. woman had to let him in his intentionality his intentionality, his intentionality. Yep. Mm-hmm. that's powerful that is that is really powerful and, mm-hmm. and you're right i mean you're so right everybody has to jump through those hoops it's just who's willing to endure yeah you know the those things and, and like you said it's easy to make excuses for why other people succeed where i seem to fail mm-hmm. but the reality is I still need to take these specific steps. I still need to jump through those hoops. I still need to shake those hands. I still need to talk to those people if I'm going to get to where I want to be. And, you know, D'Artagnan had mentioned this in our interview with Sailing Lutris. Um, he put it in the context, he was, we're paying the price. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to pay the price to live mm-hmm. your dream. Yeah. It's, right. free, it's free to dream. It is free, <laughs> you know, but it costs something to manifest it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and I think that's where people fall off, you know, is they're not willing to pay the price for their dream. Because when things get hard, when things get difficult, they quit, they give up, they throw up, they throw in the towel. And it's like, listen, everybody who gains any kind of success, whatever the success is, getting a degree, getting a, a PhD, starting a business, whatever, have, raising successful children. Yes. You know, it's hard work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. You see what I'm saying? You want a beautiful yard. It's hard work yes. to keep them weeds out of your yard, man. It's not, naturally the weeds will take over. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's physically out there and in here. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. you just let it go and just do whatever it does, weeds mm-hmm. fall, crop up everywhere. It takes over. Mm-hmm. It's hard work, intentional work to build something beautiful. Yes. To mm-hmm. live your dream. Absolutely. And that's, and that's the truth of it. And I, and I learned that one, the, the first place that people are wondering where, where to start, I'll always say the first start is your mind. You have to reprogram yourself. If you tried to achieve something, you couldn't achieve and you keep failing. It's because you don't really believe that's who you are. You know, when it comes to losing weight, people often think like, you know, some people are just born genetically faster metabolism. No, those people just work harder. They eat better. And it starts understanding that I've got to work hard to lose this weight. 
I have to reprogram my mind. I'm not a fat person losing weight. I'm a healthy person getting in alignment. Once you reprogram yourself, then you will you will be more aligned to lose weight versus saying, well, my family's fat and my, I'm fat. No, you have to reprogram mind. And listen, that reprogramming of your programming of your mind takes work and effort and energy every single day. Mm-hmm. I'm diligent about what I read, about where I go. My wife knows if she asks me to go somewhere, I'll ask her who's there. I, there there's some people I don't want to be in their environment more than 15 minutes. I, I'm spending too much time reprogramming my, my mind. I can't be in an, another environment that's going to suck me away with that. So you have to start building up bridges around yourself to say, I'm going to spend time. Like doing this is intentional. I, these, I was like, these are the kind of people I want to spend time with. They're smart. I want to be smart like them. Right? That, <laughs> but you know what? That's what brings you closer. So I'm like, yes, I'll do the thing. on. I don't usually do anything on Sundays. But the fact is, it was you guys. So I'm like, I'll do it on Sundays. Why? Because I want to be in their environment. That, that to me is intentional. So people are just be intentional about what you watch, that social media, your phone, texting, what you do in the morning. You have to really spend the time programming your mind because sometimes it doesn't happen. You don't have that switch where it's like, okay, all of a sudden they just did X. That doesn't, that's not real life for everyone. So if, if you don't get the click from inside, you have to create the click. <laughs> if, if you didn't get the doctor report saying, if you don't lose weight in five years, you're gonna lose, you're gonna die. You gotta create the doctor report. You gotta artificially create a, a, an event in your own life and you can do it through your mind. So whether you get it outside or inside, you gotta create that click in your head. Something he told me um, when, um, when I first started listening, um, listening is important, right? That's so important. It's not just listening to, the resources around you more, more importantly, is listen to the self-talk, what do you, what's going on in your head. Mm. And so when I first started kind of on this journey of transformation, changing, I've, I've done things for so long um, that I would tell myself certain things like being a leader. I had to tell myself, you are a leader, mm-hmm. but it felt so unnatural. It did. I was like, I feel like I'm lying to myself. He said, no, the lie is you for the past you know 30 years telling yourself you're not a leader. That was mm-hmm. the lie. You're now telling yourself the truth and you have to condition, condition yourself to hearing and receiving the truth. So it go, all goes back to listening and listening to yourself and, and changing the, that dialogue is in, in particular, that, that self-talk that's happening in your head. Um, what are the things that you ought, that you don't even realize that you're saying? Because for a long time, I was like, I'm not, I, I'm not saying those things to myself. And then I started to pay attention. I'm like, yeah, like something will come, come my way. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I'm not a leader. And I'm like, wait a minute. What do you mean you're not a leader? You can do that. You can do that just as well as the next person. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not you? Mm-hmm. So it's really about listening and, and being intentional about saying, when that happens, I'm going to stop. I'm going to redirect that, even when it feels unnatural. Those are the most important times to do that is when it doesn't feel natural. That's when you got to push through. So now it becomes more, I'm more relaxed when I think about leadership. I don't get anxious. I don't think negative mm-hmm. thoughts. I think more like, hmm. Could that be me? Is that my role? Is that something I could do? Versus versus five, 10 years ago, but absolutely not. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to do this. Yeah. 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 And I love that because it's also too that just because someone has been doing it longer than you doesn't mean they do it better. Mm. (laughs) And I think we get stuck in that as well that, wow, they've been in business this long or I'm just now getting into this. What does that look like? You know, and yeah. we, we just kind of put ourselves down. It's like, no, you still have awesome skills that you can bring to the table that can be just as great, if not better. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, in the interest of time, you know, we promised you guys just about an hour and we're hitting our, we're about hitting our time limit. Um, what are some, you know, last minute thoughts you want to share with the viewers, things that they should keep in mind, maybe your last tidbits of advice before we close out for today? (laughs) I think um, for me, I encourage people, there's never a particular point in your life that you have to have it figured out. And there's no particular point when you have to, when you should wait to start, start now. It doesn't matter if you're 23, 43, 73, start now, just start, just start. Um, I think that's always the hardest part. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's exercise or it's a new job or it's opening a business, Um, just start. And 
recognize that you've got a network. Um, I always raise my our children under the notion of it takes a whole village to raise a child. But I've applied it to my own life as well, that it takes a whole village for me to become the best me possible. So thinking about who's in my village and who should be in my village, what, what voices, what, um, what things am I missing in my village that I need to have? So I encourage people to just do, just, just keep, just start moving forward and ask for what you need, like identify what you need and ask for it um, because it's there. We have access to everything we need. We just have to tap into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with that, I would say that, uh, you know, as you start to just just tap into what you um, what you need, I would also say the most important, most critical thing a person can have is belief in any religious background or any uh, uh, spiritual uh, foundation. The foundation of everything is belief. If you can't do anything right now, you literally can't do a thing. You can't believe in it. It's free. You can believe right now. Just whatever you want to do, just start believing. Dare to believe. Dare Mm -hmm. to believe that you can do it. Dare to believe that you can change where you are. Don't worry about the details right away. You need to build your your mind with unbelievable belief. Just Mm -hmm. pour in belief. Get around people who believe. Talk about belief. Don't complain. Don't spend around with time with people who complain. Just believe. Start there. And I believe once you go there and you start feeling that thing enough, action will kick in afterwards. So start with belief and then move on to determined action. That makes me think of uh, Les Brown in the 80s, his uh, speech, it's possible. Yes. Yes. It's possible. Yeah. You know, it may not look probable in the moment, but it's possible. Yes. So that's, that's what that made me think of. That's awesome. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit, uh, where can the people find you? Tell us about your website. Um, any social media uh, pages that uh, you all have that you want to highlight here? So Engage Event Center, uh, you can go to www.engageeventcenters with an S at the end.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, you're more than welcome to reach us. Uh, there's an uh, info button that you can reach out to us and we will respond to you quickly. And people can reach out to me, uh, LeBrent Speed, um, Facebook, um, on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Also, my um, uh, my business, LeBrentSpeed.org. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you both again for joining us today. You've shared some awesome information, some great, great wisdom. It's awesome. Um, so I hope our viewers out there, you know, were taking notes. <laughs> it's a good thing they can <laughs> rewind and uh, check it out, uh, check out more. Uh, so thank you all so much, and we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you for both. having us. We, we, we feel honored. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow, I hope you enjoyed that interview. So many amazing nuggets and insights about being intentional, communication, mindset you have to have, the determination, no matter how th- dark things may seem, that you have to keep going and know that there is a higher purpose for your life. So. Wow. Yeah, there was a lot of good information in that conversation. And again, we just thank the both of them for coming on and sharing some time with us. Um, you know, we're, we're just so thankful to all of the guests that we've had on the channel to this mm-hmm. point. Uh, I think we've gotten so many unique insights mm-hmm. and, and thoughts and different backgrounds and different areas of focus. And we have more coming for you. So mm-hmm. stick around. It's just the beginning. Yes, it's just the beginning. So what we would like for you to do, if you've stuck with us this long through this interview, we would like you in the comments to write down one thing you took away from today's conversation that you are going to apply to your life. Mm -hmm. Let us know what that is. We'd be so thrilled to hear from you. Absolutely. We also would like to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the channel. Connect with us. Get on the train. This train is moving. Okay. Mm -hmm. People are sharing great content. We're having a great time. We want you to be a part of that. Hit the notification bell so you are notified every time we drop a new one of these excellent interviews and give us a thumbs up because this interview was awesome. So tell us that you liked it by giving us a thumbs up as well. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you guys out there. We do this for you at the end of the day. So we hope that you're getting some good information and some great value out of these conversations. Would you like to add anything, babe? I think that's great. You said it all. All right, then. Mm -hmm. Well, then, as always, folks, 
we encourage you to take, take the, the step. step.